Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hey, John, how you doing? Art, it's good to see you again, and it's good to be seen. How are you? I'm great, and, and we have an audience out there. Hello, audience. Oh, hello. It's all our Celebrating Act 2 fans. Great. Hi. So, now, I want to ask everybody who's watching if you are celebrating your Act 2. If you're not celebrating it, is it because you're not in your Act 2, that is over 50? Or is it because you're not celebrating? Either way, you ought to be celebrating with us because what are we here for, Art? To celebrate. Yes, to celebrate and help people through the second half of their life. And and we want we want to make in order to make sure your life is the best it could possibly be. If you haven't yes. already subscribed to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash celebrating act to the number two, please go right. there right away before your expiration date is up and there you have no act three. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna to try to keep you in act two as long as you can and young and healthy and vibrant. Yes. But if you don't, if you don't subscribe, uh, who was the guy who uh, was it um, uh, Zachary or was it uh, Soupy Sales who told the kids to go get all the money out of their oh. parents' pockets? That was Soupy Sales. Yeah. yeah. Right. So th those kids didn't want to be thrown out of the Soupy Sales Club, so they they listened, and they, and they you would do money, well. Yeah. You would do well to listen also. Yeah, you don't have to send money, but we appreciate it if you do. Oh yeah, but, and also bills because the coins they just they they fill up the mailbox. <laughs> uh, any anyway, we do have something serious to discuss today. Very serious. Right, and many, I'm sure we do. What and, is it? And many 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 of the people who are either uh, parents or grandparents in the in their act two have right. a situation where they may have kids anywhere from elementary to secondary to college age kids going back to school or having to sure. enroll in school. And there are lots of issues with it. Now, uh, just for everybody to know, because our vlogs are pretty current, uh, we are near uh, the middle of September of uh, right. of the year of the COVID. And, and uh, I don't know about your uh, grandchildren, Art, but mm -hmm. my uh, youngest grandchildren, started school last week so uh, second first second week of uh, september they started school school or online school online school so that's an interesting thing so the real issue i think is for for most of us do we want online school for our kids or do we want in-person school and i there's mixed emotions for most people okay so this, what, do, what do you uh, what do you prefer so i think there's a, there's a lot of issues here uh, first of all, for grandparents, it's not so much, uh, uh, let's say, for parents of uh, kids going to school, for many of them, they've counted on school, in essence, being a place for the kids to be during the day so they can go to work. Yeah. And right. uh, there, there are many parents who, uh, because they might have uh, to be at a job from nine to five or whatever it happened to be, and plus commute time, would also have an after school for particularly the younger children. So one of the things is, how do we get the economy open again? And I think that is driving a lot of uh, governors from around the country. The uh, uh, other things are uh, the health and safety, not necessarily of the kids, although uh, there's a lot of evidence now showing that kids not only carry but are getting uh, COVID. They haven't been getting it because they've been locked down at home for the most part. So they've sort of been sequestered. So the question is, what happens if, the kids bring it home, and now all of a sudden the parents and grandparents get it, who may not be able to fight it off so easily. So that's another issue. And then, the, the, of course, there are the social issues of can kids really have a, a good educational experience without intermixing with other kids? Well, let's deal with the educational experience first. Okay, good. Um, my grandchildren, uh, my youngest grandchildren uh, live up the hill. Are, uh, have just started school. They're all virtual. Um, it's all online school. And the school district has said, we're going to do online for for 30 days. Weeks. And then we're going to take a poll of all the parents to see which parents want their kids to go back into the school in-person education. 
and which want them to stay home. Now, you know that chances are it's going to be 50-50. Mm -hmm. That means that in a month, this school district is going to have to continue the online lessons and they're going to have to continue, uh, they're going to have to open up the schools to have classes of some sort, whether it's three days a week or five days a week or, you know, having the kids sit 20 feet apart, whatever it is, they're going to have to figure it out for in-person learning. I can tell you from our point of view, not me personally as a grandparent, but my daughter and her husband and, and their kids, they all want to go back to school. So the kids really, because I've talked to them, one of them is 13 years old, the other is 10, and an eight-year-old. And they all like going to school. They like the social uh, part of it. The older two really feel they learn more. And um, I'll give you an example. Today, my 13-year-old uh, grandson finished school at, uh, at 12 o'clock. It wasn't officially finished, but the lessons were finished. And then they break for lunch, and then you're on your own study program. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think they're studying? No, they're not studying. He's got his friend over who came and sat with him. They're in the classmates. They came and sat and went to school for three hours this morning. And then this afternoon, they're playing Fortnite or in the pool or doing this. Whether that is personal study time or not is debatable, okay? But my point is that kids recognize that they're not learning as much. Kids recognize that they don't have the same individual attention uh, despite the technology. And let's face it, some of the teachers are better at online learning than others. It's a skill that has to be learned by the teachers. So I can tell you from our family's point of view, they want the kids to go back to school because the parents, yes, they need, you know, they need some free time. They can't sit in the house eight hours a day because these kids are at school, uh, online at school. So that's, that's one, what do you call it, one vote? Will you uh, one okay, opinion? So let me give you. Let me from, give you. Opinion. From my point of view, my point of view as a grandfather, I want them to go back to school too because I believe that in learning is better for the majority of kids, not for everybody. Um, and I also believe that they, we need, as a society, we need to get everybody back to quote normal. What normal is going to be? We need to get them out of the house. We need to get businesses going. We need to get the schools working. We need to get people going back to work, all right? So that's a kind of a, what do you call it, a social point of view. As a grandparent, I'm not worried if they get um, coronavirus. I'm not worried if the kids get it because we know that the statistics, even though they keep changing, we know the statistics say that the people who are most vulnerable, most uh, what dangerous are really the, the over 60. In fact, over 80 is the statistic I got. Um, and people who have their immune systems challenged. So that's not the vast majority of children. That's not the vast majority of parents. They'll even if they get it, they'll suffer through it just like the flu. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about my wife and I. Mm -hmm. So when they go back to school, we will be more um, cautious about interacting with them because yes, kids can bring back a virus and the parents can get the virus and, and it spreads and nobody really knows the answer to how it spreads or who's going to die from it. You know, there's a lot of statistics thrown out and the statistics change every month. Every month we learn something new and there's another opinion. So I'm not looking at this as a pure uh, cut and dried answer. I'm looking at this as a big picture. The okay. big picture is so, let's get them back to school so, so let me, and we'll protect the old people. Let me help you expand the picture, if you will. Uh, Please expand the picture while I take a sip. Uh, the, um, there's a little question in my mind, as a matter of fact, no question in my mind, that the kids get a far superior, not a better, but a superior experience in school than online and online especially with a lot of parents that are doing home teaching and have for years having nothing to do with covid uh right. have spent a lot of time to make sure that they remain focused and what have you but here's the secret sauce i spent nine years as an elected school board member in public school systems back in new york and we had uh, a suburban new york city uh, school district and we had from k to 12, we had uh, been a while, 
three high schools, four junior high schools, and uh, then there were four elementary school districts. And I sat on boards of both the high school and the elementary. So we had about uh, four or five elementary uh, in each district, which was about four, so it was about 20 elementary schools, uh, three high schools, and about seven or eight uh, junior highs altogether. And here's, okay. here's the problem. The problem is, is that I, I forget about politics of anything. Okay, we're in Southern California right now. We we live in adjacent counties, and one of them theoretically is getting ready to open for business, and the other one I think is is one week difference in this theoretical. Well, how many people got sick or died, and we're just about a week away from um, uh, Labor Day, and after every major weekend holiday, I'm in Orange County. You're in San Diego County. Uh, and it's not just kids, it's parents, it's, it's uh, just people frustrated who want to be out. They've been going to the beach, they've not been social distancing, and we've always had spikes within two or three weeks. And here... Okay, here, I'm, I'm missing your point. Okay, I know, because you, you went on and on and on, and you had, you, had all the things oh, I'm that, sorry. you had all the things that we agreed on. But here's what the real okay. issue is, okay? Is that just like every, all the really smart people we're going to have kids go back to college. And now it's about, you know, five or 8,000 college kids that have COVID and they can't control them. And little kids, little kids are not going to keep their masks on. Okay. It's just not going to be able to do it. And they're going to touch their face and they're going to touch your eyes. And so what's going to happen is that, uh, and in fact, I think Israel just ran through the same thing is that they opened up everything and now they locked it down. They locked down the whole country just within the last week. And until we get this thing under control and we can go into the whole thing about, will it take vaccine, will it just take time, whatever it will, okay? And that's beyond the purpose of this discussion right now. What I am certain of with my experience of dealing not with COVID, but with other issues uh, in, in the school districts is that people, people are gonna get sick and it's going to spread and it's going to spread pretty easily and quickly. And then we're going to have to shut down all again. So, so here's, here's our, my conclusion. Okay? okay. Is that I would rather have a controlled environment where they're home and they're okay. We're fortunate. Both of us live in an area where the kids can actually get a fairly decent education. And we do have some flexibility of having, both grandparents, because I'm a teacher's aide uh, going over with my, my little uh, grandkids. But if they go back to school and then their mom has to go back to teaching in school as opposed to home. So the three grandparents that exist in that unit will have for large measure be taking, picking them up, bringing them home, maybe sitting right. with them. And we're going to do that, okay, no matter what. I don't care whether we wear masks or not. That's part of what a family does so that everybody can get out there. But there is zero question, not even the slightest hint of it could possibly be okay, that we're not going to be faced with a lockdown uh, 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 where they're going to have to close the schools. And they'll do that because I can tell you that school boards that keep schools open, that are getting lots of COVID cases, teachers, staff, and some of them getting really sick, okay, and some kids, God forbid, a kid, uh, and there are a few cases of kids that get very sick and die. God forbid they have that. They're going to get sued for having uh, followed whose information? Uh, Saddleback College, Cal State University, has closed for the year. Okay, they're not taking any chances. So, so the local school district is going to open for little kids who can't even control themselves a little bit. So I think what's going to happen is that we're going to be in a position where within a month there's going to be sufficient problems in the schools that they're going to have to go back to online and to me that's worse than just roughing it out online until we, we get some kind of control over this which i personally still believe is not going to be until we're well into 2021 when we have a white assuming that we get a, a vaccine in the next two or three months until it gets out far enough okay 
uh, to uh, first, first responders and uh, uh, medical workers. I think they're the first people that should get it if it's an effective vaccine because they're exposed quite frequently all the time. And then the other people that we call the central workers who are uh, driving trucks, who are working in grocery stores, I think they need to get that so that they stay healthy because we need those people to, to do that so that we have some semblance of normal. And then to teachers and to uh, people in schools, probably the kids last uh, because they're not the most vulnerable uh, group. So based on my experience of having dealt with some of these things before, I can see where this is going. I can see where various states opened too soon. They opened up bars and then all of a sudden within two or three weeks after every major holiday, holiday because people are frustrated and they're getting out there. And that's what there's almost no question in my mind that every school district that opens up and has students come on campus from elementary to secondary to colleges, doesn't matter where they are. It's an experience. That's what kids are supposed to do. Interact. That's what kids do. And that's why that that live learning experience is so valuable. So for particularly places that that have the resources of online uh, that are fairly available. Uh, unfortunately, there are some places within inner cities that that just or uh, in very rural areas in uh, Montana and the Dakotas and uh, uh, Native American reservations, uh, they just don't have the availability of internet and they're really screwed uh, and they're going to have to work out some other things. But at least for the, uh, the centers where you can do that, I think we just have to tough it out a little bit longer until we get some of this past us because there's no question in my mind that within three or four weeks, <coughs> school districts are going to start closing all over the place because they can't keep them open if they're going to have uh, uh, dozens and dozens and hundreds of cases. And the real shame of it all will be that some people, they might, might have caught COVID anyway, okay? But if they, if they got it because it was through the school system, okay, it's going to just devastate communities. They're going to shut down again, and we'll probably have kids out longer. So anyway, I agree with you. Absolutely, if we can get the kids together, that would be great. I think it's just premature and uh, it's just going to blow up in our faces. And then how are you going to explain to the kids again? You know what? They have to close the schools because people are getting sick. Now, if you believe that's not going to happen, we do that. We'll know within three or four or five weeks. I don't want to take the risk. It's not my decision, but I don't want to take the risk. If I had the choice, I wouldn't send my grandkids back to school yet. Okay. And, and, and they're like six and eight uh, 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 in kindergarten and you know, second or third grade. So. I, I'm not prepared to send it back because of the reasons I just stated. And I, by the way, I respect anybody who wants to get the kids back for all the reasons you mentioned. Okay. Can I talk? Uh, let's see. Okay. okay. Yeah. I've only, it, I've only had it. I've only had it for about. I've only had about uh, for half of the 18 minutes we've been on the air so far. Okay. So there's the a few hours in a day left for me to talk. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I appreciate your experience with the school board, and you're absolutely right. School board is an institution, and it doesn't just operate for the benefit of the children. Every institution is too complicated to just have one mission. It operates for its employees. It's got to take care of its employees. It also operates for the society, the local community, mm -hmm. and it is a it is a legal institution of some sort, whatever, however it's organized. And you're absolutely right. The pro one of the problems that we face with this virus thing is that we're a litigious society, and somebody's going to sue somebody for something. You all right. Uh, you can, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, you can count that there's going to be lawsuits. So that's your in your your experience is probably spot on because that's what the kind of thing that happens in our society. Somebody gets sick, somebody sues somebody, right? People sue them. So in that regard, you're probably correct. The schools are going to have a big problem. And the second thing I wanted to point out is that you and I have slightly different situations. You are an active caregiver for your three, for your two grandchildren. Mm -hmm. The little ones, right. My boys up the hill, we're not active caregivers. We bake cookies 
of fun. We work in the garden, but we're not active caregivers. So if they get sick or get COVID, it's not a big deal that we don't see them. For you, if your kids get sick, it's a big deal. Somebody's got to take them to school. And when your son and daughter or work, daughter-in-law are working, that's you and your wife. And you guys are in tremendous um, exposure. Yeah. danger. Yeah. In danger to exposure to that. My wife and I, we don't have to have the exposure if we don't want to. Okay, kids, we're not going to work in the garden this week. We're not going to make cookies. We're not going to see you next week. See you in a month. See you, doesn't matter. So we have different situations. And I think that's one of the big divides uh, in society today is that there are people who, and I don't mean parents, there are people who are um, very susceptible, that I'll, I'll call them the old people, for lack of a better word. People like, your, people generally... like, people like your age. Yeah, exactly. Not people like me, I'm quite young. frankly, yeah. that, again, the statistic that sure. I saw was over, sure. over 80. Right. But let's say it's over 60 with a, an underlying condition. Those people, um, some of them are going to be in a position where they really can't avoid, uh, like yourself, they really can't avoid mixing with the kids or the, their children, their adult children. And that's a problem. That, that's a problem that has to be worked out individually. For my wife and I, we can isolate without a problem. The third thing that I wanted to mention is, even though I agree with you on many of these aspects, um, the overall approach to this is we disagree on. Because you accept the idea that if there's an outbreak, we have to shut down everything again. And I don't accept that. And I, here's the reason I don't accept that. We shut down from, what, February or March through April or May. And anytime anybody opened up, there's, oh, it went up and it goes down. We're going to shut up. We're, up. we're shutting it down. We're going to let people in restaurants. No, we're not. You can go into a hair salon. No, you can't. It's going to happen. It is a virus. It spreads. We're not really sure about all the details, but we know it spreads. And we know basically that it's it's affecting mostly the older people who are vulnerable. And and it's going to happen. You can't – I just disagree with the premise that we can shut everything down again. First of all, if we didn't shut it down well enough the first time, what makes you think we're going to shut it down any better the second time? Or the, this would be the third time in my estimation. Um, but more than that, after you unlock – after you open it again, you're going to get the spread. We, nobody has said that by isolating and shutting everything down, we're going to eliminate the virus. They said it would it would flatten the curve. They said it would prevent the spread. They didn't say it was going to be eliminated. So the premise that, oh, we have to lock, we'll, if we get sick again, we'll have to lock down again. I don't buy that. I just don't buy it. And my attitude is a different way of looking at it. And I, there's a lot of people that subscribe to, or I subscribe to their attitude. And that is that since there is a very clear group of people in our society that are the most vulnerable, call them over 60 with uh, underlying conditions, those are the people that need to be isolated. Those are the people that need to be cautious. And those are the people we need to take extra care of. And not that children can't get sick and maybe even die or middle-aged people, parents can't get sick and maybe even die. That's not to say that. It's to say that the great majority of really serious cases is this minority group. That's the group that we ought to be isolating. That's the group that ought to be locked down. That's the group that we ought to be worried about the most. Not, which is what we're doing now and the way you describe it, not – Shutting everything down to protect everybody. So okay, so, so, so now that's, so that's where we differ. Now let me have my other counterpoint, and and we both Please want do. what we both want is what is best for our society in general, our kids in yes. particular, our grandkids. Yes. So <clears throat> uh, a couple of things. Uh, my premise was not so much concerned about my exposure, but and I tried to couch it into the exposure of the kids and the staff and uh, right. both the teachers and 
the janitorial and everybody that makes that school go. I, I understand. And, we disagree oh, so, on that. Anyway, finish. Fine. And so, uh, and kids, uh, no matter how well intentioned, are for the most part not going to be able to be totally uh, socially distanced. And so here, here are what the, to me, the bigger issues are and, and what informs my decision. That there are a number of places, uh, New Zealand, um, Korea, South Korea, for the most part, Australia, that have had for a three or four or five week period of time, uh, Taiwan is another one, draconian measures, which included no traveling right. and so on and so forth. And every time they wind up getting one or two uh, a breakout someplace, they'll, they'll isolate that and they'll lock it down. They don't have to lock down the whole society because they've done well enough that mostly it's a non-existent issue for the vast majority of people. And every time there's a little hot spot someplace, they get on top of it, they isolate everybody for two or three weeks. That's number one. I know, I, so, I've heard about Okay, it. so that's number one. Where's Dr. Liz when we need her? Number two is that um, it's just a question of can, do we have the will to, if we wind up doing it again, as I say, Israel just did the whole country. They didn't just do a little piece of it. It just got totally right. out of hand, okay? So the, the, the real question for me is, can we get to a point where we can then take those isolated steps? I'm sorry, you can't open bars. It just spreads. People take their masks off. You can't have large gatherings of people without masks. If you don't believe that this is spread uh, virally, I mean, in an aerosol way, and you don't have to wear a mask, and there are tons of people who are saying, it's my right of freedom never to have to wear a mask. Well, if they don't wear a mask, what they're doing is they're endangering everybody else. People who feed, who have kids who go to school, and right. so on and so forth. So, without getting into all of that, I, my, my belief is that until we get this under control, it may have to be till the entire school year, okay, which is till next June, where the kids are going to have to be distant learned because there are going to be so many failures that, in spite of the best intentions, and I don't want to suggest that these are not best intentions by school administrators, even by people who are on the boards and right. so forth. They, everybody wants everybody to be back. We just can't do it yet because we're not there yet. And, and, and let's keep, okay. we, I, by the way, congratulations to us for having kept the politics out of this because really you and I could probably uh, lock and load <laughs> and <laughs> boom. <laughs> yes. So on that. Yeah, so, sure we could. So, sure we could. But it, but you're right. It's, it's not a matter of politics. It's really about uh, people disagreeing, honest disagreement right. with uh, all good intentions on both sides, both people wanting the same thing. But the answer is, how do you get there? And I, I want to end your last points with a reminder that for every country you said that had a draconian dot lockdown that uh, solved the problem, there's, I don't know if it's Norway or Sweden, one of those had no lockdown at all, and they're no worse off than Actually, anybody else in Europe. So, so let's, so let's, why don't we end this now? Because we don't have, have enough deep dive of the facts, but, and I don't even want to next week. Okay. But if you go and take a look, I actually just read something on, on a wonderful, wonderful Sweden. Uh, and uh, it's, it's really a shame uh, what's happened there, but they are actually a lot worse off. Uh, it's just that the initial reports coming out seem to be, well, we'll get her herd immunity. Let's not go there because we're not qualified. We don't have the papers in front of us. But I think that what we're sharing today is that we both have perfectly valid reasons for wanting the kids back in school. And there are reasons beyond just it's better for the kids. Obviously, we can't really get the economy going uh, full steam ahead without because we have now become dependent on the school system to be a place where our kids are housed during the day right. so that parents can go. So there are all those things at work. But I think what's going to happen, and, and time will tell, and every two or three weeks, probably on our vlogs, whatever we're talking about, we'll revisit this issue because it's happening right now. It's September 13th, 14th. I think it's September 14th right now. Uh, and we're probably going to know by October 15th uh, where this experiment 
and right now it is an experiment, has worked and where it hasn't worked. And I hope that, I hope that uh, beyond my belief uh, that it's possible that, um, that it works out and they're able to keep everybody safe at school. When I say everybody, there are gonna be some people no matter where they go, okay, who can be safe and who are not gonna be safe. And then we'll someday maybe discuss, uh, apparently a lot of people don't just get over COVID they have these ongoing issues uh, that last for a long time. Good, healthy people, otherwise healthy people. So uh, uh, what we'd like to know is to our audience, uh, whether you're a 50 year old, a 60 year old or a 70 year old having kids, uh, maybe you're a teacher, maybe you don't have kids anymore in school, uh, whether you're an administrator, whether you're on a school board or whether you're just a grandparent concerned about your or kids. A parent. I don't care. Uh, we'd love to hear from parents. Yeah. So why don't we do that? We've sort of spoken our piece and I think we've fairly well represented uh, all of the surround most of the surrounding issues. Maybe we missed some. OK, but we do have that unified sense that we want our kids back in school because that's the best place for them. If it's a safe environment for both they and the people of the, of the district and and event, eventually, OK, downstream us because of who they get uh, in contact with. So uh, as always, uh, thank you, John, uh, because you have Art. clarities that clarity of issues that I don't, well, I appreciate, I don't fully see on my own. And hopefully my nonsense to you makes a little bit of sense. And uh, we'd like to hear from everybody out there. Uh, Art, I'm going to graciously accept your thank you because I'm giving you the last word. It's killing me. <sighs> Thanks for watching, everybody. See you soon. Write to us. Let us know what you think. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.